Duran Duran, but tell me this one, see when it was at that tour. Did, did sorry, <laughs> did you use the opportunity at catering? To say that you were hungry like the wolf. Oh, <laughs> one man, two. <laughs> two. Welcome to a pint and two shots. Coming to you from the G4 podcast studio. With part time pundit and average actor Stephen Purden. And bringing a wealth of knowledge and questionable patter, it's our no nonsense dafty Chris Toll. Completing our front three, it's the man himself. All the way from the tap end of Stevenson, it's Grado. Welcome to a pint two shots, it's a podcast, it's a football podcast, we're live here in a G4 Claim studio. We're here with a champ, Shell Suit Bulb, Chris Toll, and we've got a very special guest, none other, the lead singer of The View, he is Kyle Faulkner. Hello, Hello Kyle. It's good to have him here, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm uh, gutted, man, I'm gutted he's wearing a trackie, you fucked my first joke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And today we have a pair of same jeans. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. I thought that. I prefer to leave that to the the, the listeners to get for aye, the Just in that. case, mate. Just in aye, case. Aye, I tell you what, it's Kyle Wright. See how with the amount of folk that you end up bumping into and folk go, wow, I can't believe you bumped into him, fuck the players and stuff like that. I don't care to MD that's caused as much a stir as bumping into you a few times, Kyle. See the amount of folk that messaged me going, I loved him when I was a teenager. Can you get him to play my wedding? Can he do a video for me? You really are a popular man. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny though when you're on a bit. Oh, when they were a teenager, it's not. It's funny now because um, all the voice sounds are sexy over there because I've got a cold. Um, but uh, no, I, I think it's like it's funny because everyone's like. Um, or oh, when I was my kids, my, ki- my kids are like I'm trying to teach them what like what it was like when the view were it, and I'm like, was it that long ago? Oh, like it was like what 15 years ago. Or something. Um, so many memories for football. It was fucking Aye. brilliant. See that whole period of time with music. It was tremendous. I remember using the Arctic Monkeys come about round about roughly the same time, and the two albums were never out my CD player, man. Get away, my age. The two albums were on the half my your CD my player. Eight track. <laughs> <laughs> your, your hi-fi. My eight track was <laughs> was in trouble for the view and the Arctic Monkeys, but I loved it, man. Course. Bread and Circuses was the soundtrack to my wedding. I've told you that before, Kyle. I used to play yeah. that. All the time, man, that album is the best. What's yeah. your favourite yeah, album? You, you, tell him, you tell him a good thing about him now. Aye. Well, <laughs> I was a bit of a mosher. <laughs> I, I was into my 36 Crazy Fists and metal and stuff like that, so I can't see him jeans. Aye. <laughs> I can't that. That was never after wireless, wasn't it? No? <laughs> wireless. But, um, <laughs> wireless. CD players in the wireless. Mm. So no, tell me, it's, I mean, it's, it's funny as well because we were not, I didn't consider myself like, um, to be in an indie band at the time. Mm-hmm. We got kind of categorised as an indie band. Um, I was a bit of a mosher as well. I was not really a mosher, but I was into like. I liked I liked um, Metallica and Iron oh. Maiden, but then also like Michael Jackson. I liked everything. I liked right. like Anne. Were you into George Michael? Class. I love everything. I don't think there's nothing I don't like. What about Duran Duran? Do you like them? I love them. I've toured with Duran Duran before. Oh. Simon Le Bon. Uh, Simon yeah, Le Bon. Yeah, but when I played with Mark Ronson, we used to we used to take this big. There was two buses. It was like super buses, and there was like Boy George, like Duran Duran, like Ghostface Killer, uh, <laughs> Mary J. Blige. It was Abdi with a star. Mary J. Blige. Yeah, it was mental. Wow, man. man. Um, well, there was no more dramas in that too. <laughs> no, I, was, I think I got in trouble one night because I demanded to play. Um, what was that? What was that film that, that uh, the Love Guru? Abdi hated it. I was like, because I was obsessed with Mike Miles. Miles, and I was like, oh, Abdi's not watching Love Guru. And Mark was like, we're, we're not watching Love Guru, man. We're not watching <laughs> shit. And I was like, we're putting on the Love Guru. Articles rest on the remote of people's hands. <laughs> and eventually, I got it on, and it was like the security came up back to the bus and says, you need to go to bed. And I was like, ah, can you get the body? Out? And I was like, no. It's like, it's like, I'll get to your get to your bed. So I woke up the next day and I was like, did I piss off, Mary Jo Blige? Kind of mean. It's like, oh, you were being quite aggressive and rude. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, man. I was just a really love that film, man. <laughs> See, I think you, 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 I think the thing that I like about you is you just don't care about who you're with. You, you don't change. So the likes of you've been on that tour bus with Mary J. Blige, and like, you, you, you never actually. Duran, Duran, but tell me this one. See when it was at that tour. Just fucking interrupt my question. Did you, <laughs> sorry, did you use the opportunity at catering? To say that you were hungry like the wolf. Oh, oh one man, two. <laughs> two. <laughs> no, no. We get just... it, you know, goes a punch and all that. <laughs> Come on, that's part of the act. Come no, on. At, at, at the time, I wouldn't have even knew that song. Like, um, I was clueless. I got. I started listening to them after I kind of played with them. But, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll crack it if I see them again. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> hey, see, as, as our, like, obviously we're sitting here, right? We're going to be a mega fanboy here and what, you know, all the, all the gossip about who you're hanging about with and all that. But do you still hang about with folk that you, you toured back when the day? Like, are you... Not really, no. Um, I see, because we left, left the view, um, I left the view, and, but, well, the view sparsed or whatever we've done, I'm not sure. We just you know, had a break or whatever, hiatus, um, in about 2017. And then I'd done solo stuff and I moved to America and like, it was pandemic and all that shit. So nobody was, there was a uh, stop hanging about with anybody, do you? And I had kids. So right. it was like um, that changes everything. That, that, does, that does put a stop to yeah, hanging about I mean, with folk. Even I, I don't know. I started thinking like, do we go? Out? I started saying to my missus like, do we go out enough? Are we turning into like this, this like weird like we clicky family? I don't know like go out and do anything anymore. But I think we do. I mean, I, even this today, me going to Glasgow is like a wee a wee trip for me. I'm like, ah, so getting a wee hotel and that just for this podcast. Hey, there we go. <laughs> just for this podcast. Did you, did you know say somewhere that you were in America and? Once the pandemic hit, they were all you shot yourself because they were all queuing up for guns. Yeah, <laughs> with that, I, 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 no, I, that was mental. Eh? I mean, who thought about that? What part of America was it? Uh, LA, we, we were in LA and sold the house, was in Money Feast and sold the house. Money Feast, a wee bit, it's, uh, and just the touch it said of Dundee. And uh, we sold it, and I was like, oh, let's move to America rather than get another house. I thought, let's move to America. And then my missus was just as crazy as me. She was like, let's do it. And we only had two kids at the time, but they were like, um, we were there and it was just a pandemic and my, my, my manager kept saying I don't think it's going to be a big thing don't worry about it it's oh. just like it's, it's, you know, I was like he's normally right but I was like and I just went oh, these Americans going about with guns I was like oh, it's getting pretty serious like, I was like what's the guns going to help with the virus I know just shooting blind viruses man it was like but, uh, but uh, and I came back and then it was just like I had another kid and um, uh, but uh, it's just Chaos, man. You can't it's like can kids. So three kids you've got now. Yeah, man. Um, it's just like a big air purifier. It's filled with the cold and just like goes around the house. <laughs> I know, man. You're just like, oh, I just be bunged up at the time. <laughs> it's, it's so true, isn't it, man? Yeah. You never get no well unless you what what the way you get no well when you've got wings, man. Aye, it's, it's an absolute right now. Oh, it's nuts. But see, like obviously you're saying when you had to be hiatus for review. Why did that come about? Why did you kind of go your separate ways? Um, because we're, we've been playing in the same band since we were 14. And then we were like, we were in a cover band. We were called Lost Weekend. We were called Kyle and the Casuals. And we were, at one point we were called Surreal, right? And my mate's uh, dad used to say, he used to make me say it. And it was a, it was a minter. Do you say minter or do you say redneck? Minter, redneck. We used to go, we used to go like, up and say, um, right, you're called Surreal. But Ed, on the mic, I had to go, you have been great. We've been Surreal. Good night. <laughs> And, uh, and I used to go, I'm not I'm no saying it, I'm not saying it. And he was like, come on, you've got to say it. And I go, right, right fine then. I go, you have been great. We've been surreal. <laughs> and then I did it and I was like, oh, we need a new name. So I think we got Kyle on the casuals. We won the talent show a couple of years running. And then we got into the bevy when we were about 15. And as, as you do, being Scottish. And then um, when we were about 16, we started writing songs before that, but we never thought there were anything. And then once we started... Um, me and Kieran coming together, we're like these are pretty decent. And then we were in this place called the Bay View. We used to rehearse, and then we says we'll call ourselves the View. And then started playing in Dundee. And then what was your question in the first place? Um, <laughs> anyway, well, it, was all, it was all good. But anyway, we've been playing non-stop since we were fourteen. And then talent shows, other stuff. And then we were touring, and we got signed. Like, I was seventeen, they were eighteen, and it was pretty whirlwind. And then we were just touring non-stop. Even when we were going to Europe and Australia, it was still the same places. We were never getting where we wanted to go and it was like because there was this time when it was like that was like everyone was crazy into the into the, into the, the drugs or whatever and into the, the bevy like full on and even the record labels were like that and then all of a sudden like but like the vaccines and that came out and then it was like like the band the vaccines came out and it was like they were like clean cut and it was all this and, and then it wasn't cool to be like aye. sort of sleet and indie sleaze and we were like how would you stop being an indie sleaze it was like it's hard aye, to kind of stop aye, that aye. so we were kind of chasing our tail we trying to like we were trying to clean up our act and we're like the, the record label we're trying to get to go to elocution lessons and all this and like, Aye. Uh, yeah it was like we we're trying to we we're trying to turn turn over a new leaf but we we're still tired as this the crazy view guys so Aye. it was it was class and we were like we were like number two on college radio which is a big thing and it was like everyone was like we're getting these awards for shit and then but when we got tonight to go in, I was like, whatever, I don't even want to go to America. And then <laughs> now I'm like, oh, please. And so I tried to get in for years. I had loads of different lawyers working on it. Matt Ronson had to get a letter from Quincy Jones to get to get his in. I've, wow. still, got, I've still got the letter. Wow. Um, but yeah, I, 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 That's I, I, amazing. I eventually, eventually got back in. And then it was like, we came back and then the view toured there in like 2000, 
14, 15 or something, it was like, when maybe like New York, LA, San Fran was like sold out with the rest were like playing to like six people in San Diego when before it was like 3,000 cap venues and it was like, oh, what? So I was like, oh, we missed it. So still trying to hit that that, that number one in, in America, uh, but... Are you okay? Yeah, I think. <laughs> That's mental, Sorry. isn't it? That like Quincy Jones, Motown's got a hand in the view getting back know, in America. Man, I know. It just shows you you do need to go through a lot of stuff like that when you're trying to get into America letters and lawyers. Yeah, man. Was you doing it at the embassy and all that carry on for me? I've done it all. I was sitting with Jamie Oliver at the, at the, of all people. He was there and he was like, Yeah, I'll be for the same trouble, mate. I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you're, well, you're on the sneeze. You're on the sneeze, Jamie. Jamie. <laughs> and he was like, Oh, I just oh, I, said, I can't go through it. He said, But he was telling us what to say before I went up in that. And I was like, oh, <laughs> mate, that's a sure. sketch in itself. <laughs> Kyle Faulkner's review sitting just chewing the fat with Jamie Oliver about getting up and through it and all, mate. Nah, yeah. mate. I mean, it is the most intimidating place at Embassy. I went with a wrestler once, and we were told, don't say, just don't get, don't get away anything when we're getting our visas renewed. Aye. And this boy was like, got up, and the kind of yanks are going, and how are you enjoying staying in America? Uh, sorry, working in America. And at half past, it's like going, oh, well, I've got a missus who there now. <laughs> and it's brilliant, Aww. she's great, I love her. And they just went like that, stamp, you're not meant to be doing stuff like that, you're meant to be there and coming back for yeah. work. And that's it. And the you're reason bugging. you're there is just there to work and then come home. But that's intimidating in the, in the embassies. You're waiting there all day and then you have to speak to them. You're like, aye, aye. It is, it's, a, it's a weird thing because I, I go, I've been there like recently, the past couple of years, like just then rewriting things and that. And every time, even though uh, because I got pulled aside, if there's any conviction ever, you, all, you, you get pulled aside to, aye, to, to, the, aye. to the secondary unit. And it's like, what, I, I just pray and hope every time I go in, I go, ah, the, the pasta, ah, the what is in? Look at my wee face, I'm clean shaven. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm dressed in my best gear. They're like, to the side, sir. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, was, I used to be the glove, though. They used to get the glove out. Now it's like, nay, glove, so I'm getting better. <laughs> um, but honestly, but, uh, like, I think when you go through, you just sit there and there's nobody even in the room. There's like one person and maybe... There's maybe like not, I've been in there and there's been a hundred folk but this the last time I was there I was the only person in the room and I still waited an hour to go through and I remember I missed a connecting flight to, to Nashville before like because they were like oh you need to come into this but and I says but my flight's and they're like, it doesn't, doesn't matter about you just don't care you, like, you're missing your flight do you think <laughs> Whippy Goldberg had a hand in getting you banned for America oh, fuck knows he's <laughs> obviously oh fucking that's Phil flat right in his face she's got a TV show called The View Oh, right. Mate, that's a very oh, obscure that. joke. Man. I just, well, we're Mate, watching that every morning. Uh, it wouldn't they surprise me, fucking loose women, Steve Lee? I didn't even know she was on loose women, right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you should maybe go to Specsavers too. Because when you're driving your motorhome at night, absolutely. you can't even see two foot in front of you. It's not see the light of day in this section of the show. <laughs> it stays in. It stays in. Does it, Anne? Aye. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your recording, you fucking... <laughs> 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 Sorry, man. Sorry, Whippy. Sorry, Whippy. But, Kyle, but, so you, I, I don't know if you did actually answer. I take it it was just a matter of... Did you follow it? I don't know. Aye. No, but no, no oh, that was the point. Eh? So because we were, we were keep on doing the same thing, and I, I was just like, well, I had to go and do my own thing because whatever we kind of learnt how to live with each other on tour buses, right. and it was like, it was like, um, I guess, I guess a wee bit boring. You know what I mean, and like the last album we done, and um, we recorded with Albert Hammond Jr. for the Strokes, we recorded it in in Hamburg, and it was like I was mental at the time, and there's just loads of crazy shit going on, man. And it was like. I just remember thinking I'm not happy with this album and, and it was the first time we'd let somebody else to, like sort of change the direction of it and like he was producing it and we're like oh we'll just like put it in his hands and then I remember thinking I'm fed up doing this so then I wanted to go and produce an album on my own and I think everyone wanted to do their own thing but then they wanted to split up so we just like went and done our own thing um, and then after a while like playing the solo stuff and that, again, I think the biggest I got to like in Glasgow was like the QMU which is still good on my own but I was still missing the big roar of the view going on stage and I was like oh it's, it's kind of boring with the view you know what I mean aye, aye. I'm, but, sure, uh, I'm sure you were advertised to play in a place I go for my dinner um, and McDonald's <laughs> <laughs> No, but hey, that's what I done. So I got, I got, bars, which I thought was, was I got in cool. trouble. Well, I got in trouble for the courts again. Something happened. I'm not going into that. But um, <laughs> uh, but something happened, and I and I needed to, I needed loads of money. Like no, so I just phoned my mate and she's just book us into small wee pubs and I'll Aye. play them and get gives fifty k. So he done it, and then I got rid of my debts because I had like there was some mad shit like needing paid now, like the next wow. day. So or, or it was in trouble. You know what I mean? Wow, so, man. 
So I had to go and do that. But it was cool. I liked I liked that, you know what I mean? Like playing like because that's what we started doing, like playing playing the pubs and that, and it was great. I mean, it was playing like in Falkirk, I'd done like three shows in a day, and it was like this wee mad venue, and it was like mental. It was like it could kind of reminded me of original chaos, like because we were we were playing like academies at that point, mm. like in in Scotland. So it was like I was just like, no, it was it was good to go back and and to be able to get to be able to make money on my own rather than because if you work with a band, it's got to, it goes through a sieve, ah, uh, okay. yeah, this tax and everything. Um, so you're you're working your arse off. And I remember just before we played, we were all expecting we were going to play and then go on a hiatus and then get a big bunch of money. But there's tax bills. You've got to pay tax bills. And so Abdi was a bit like pissed off. So. I've got with my mate. I was just like, come book me some shows, and it was just like, there's the money, easy stuff. You know what I mean? No like divvied up between lawyers right. and all this shit. It was just like, he's the cash. So it was good for that. Does your mate want to sponsor a podcast? You could do, you could do a wee podcast tour in pubs. Aye. Just get paid for well, it. Well, it's funny, funny you should say right. that. Aye, we're going for that. You're right, but look, if you're playing your guitar, you're just chilling about your guitar cases mm. as if there's much things you need to pay for but then I suppose you end up doing that for so long you want to go back to doing it I you're saying you miss the buzz really like well I mean e even now that I'm like the, the view boys are back right, with, with shit's, shit's happening this week but I'm not allowed to say it and I can't release this but I'll just wait until it happens anyway but um Mate, you're I tell, get, tell us after uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I keep getting offers to do stuff, which which is good. It's good cash in it, but I don't know. It's, it's hard because they've got you between a rock and a hard place. It's like getting good cash to play this place, but I don't want to do it. It's like I don't want to play the wee gigs anymore. I mean, I'm, I've kind of passed that. Aye, but, like, aye. Was, was that, see, when you played in December at the O2, was that like your first uh, bunch of gigs together in years? Yeah, that was the first time we'd played since 2017, I think. So. It was for over five years, but that's the first we've not done an album in like eight years or something. So, are you, are you buzzing now for a bit? Yeah, man, it's class. It's same old. It's just uh, there's complications in a band. No complications, but it's just like it was easier when you didn't have to answer to anybody. Aye. Um, when you're just like the the ruler of yourself. But Aye. then, but then also, if you're playing in a playing with a soul band, like, you've got to like some can people work have got other jobs. So you're like, oh, could you make it off this day? It's like nuts. So you've got to go and like. Like get a wee guitarist to like and like train them up for the new a, a new thing, and it's just mad, mad trying to get everything organised. Um, I'm going to be doing a thing actually. We've got I've got a place in Spain like a songwriting camp. I saw that. We're we're announcing a gig of the day actually. I'm not sure when this is going out, but um, we're going to be doing like a like I'm going to be playing my solo albums back to back like each day, and then we're we're, we're doing like a thing so people can come to the house and we're going to build the yurts and people could just come and like chill in the house. That's cool. And like come over and just so hear you sit and write music and all that. Well, normally you do, but this is just a festival, so we're just bringing people over for a pool party and just to watch watch a gig by the pool. So, sounds uh, <laughs> class. When, when is this? Second to the fifth of June. Is it get karaoke? Yeah, I'm your man. Okay, all day, man. He's good. He's a good singer, by the way. You're Tina Turner. Let's do it, bro. Let's do it. He's good singing. By the way, remember that? Because I remember I met you there. I played the song. Because I didn't know you covered that song and told goes like that. Um, because I says I'm Michael Fulton. He says get him. He didn't reply. Get him to sing Tina Turner. What's love got to do with? That's and I went, right. Mate, my pal's asking for you to sing, and you just went and absolutely set it blasting it out. You need to tell yeah. me. You need. To, did you have to get? In, well, did your management or yourself have to get in touch with her to get the rights? No, to I, cover I don't it? think so. I think you could just cover anything, but then she gets the money for it if it does anything. And right. I guess like I'm pretty sure that's my most played thing on Spotify. Right. Like it's my personal thing, a uh, solo right. thing. But um I think probably about fucking forty five percent of the listeners <laughs> on me, mate, to be honest with you. I love it. It's a brilliant, it, it's a brilliant cover. Uh, it's, really that is, it's really good. <laughs> no, it's a good tune. It's a Scottish guy that wrote that as well, is it? Is it's it? like I think sure he's, sure he's fair. I did he not write simply the best as well? Oh, and yeah. him and him and Lulu wrote it together. Oh, oh was Big it? Rangers. And Tina Turner. Yeah. Big um, Rangers, man. <laughs> Tina See, do you ever, do you ever sometimes, right, go back at night and go and look at old YouTube videos of yourselves, like old interviews and stuff like that? I came, I came across that. Everybody goes on about it. That Tim loved to interview oh. on YouTube. Oh, do, you ever, do you ever go back and watch that? Nah, when, when it happened, um, I got a phone call from my mum the next day going, what the, the fuck are you playing? <laughs> this is what are you playing at? Everyone in, in my bingo is laughing at you. you idiot. Everybody in my bingo. <laughs> She says, uh, no, she says, normally I get like the, our pals like handing the, 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 the papers and that, like back in the day, my mum's dead now, but like when she, when she was alive, she they used to pass her all the stuff and she was like, oh, I'm proud of my son and, and that happened. She was like, I can't believe it, it's like ridiculous. <laughs> and just before that, she gave us a wee scalp in the face for, 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 for had, had, a, had a sword, I was playing, um, 
I was playing uh, Edinburgh, <laughs> and I got really. And this is it's funny because I would never do this nowadays, but back then it, it was you were kind of promoted to get drunk for the labels, or and I went too far all, all the time. <laughs> and, uh, but there used to be a wee shop that sold shorts, uh, swords, shelled shorts, uh, sold shorts uh, sell, so, on the sold shoe shop. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it was a big bad boy like pirate sword, and I mind just like thinking I was a big man backstage. Like, Wee, after getting like chucked off the stage, steaming, and then I had my sword, and I was like, my mum just turned up. And she was like, "What are you playing?" At? Never hurt us in my life. Scalped us, and, and I was like, <laughs> so in front of, in front of my, my dame and everything, loads of people made a fool of us. Hey, get that sword down now. Look at the state. I'm not gonna fool yourself. And I was like, oh shit! I just realised I had a pirate sword, and I was like thinking I was the big man. I was like. Oh. <laughs> There's <laughs> nothing more sober than a slap for your mom. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, well, I think like so when she phoned us that day, it was like it was like bringing back nightmares of that time. So it was, it was like, well, you've done it again. So I think it was funny at the time, but then I, the, as I got older, I'm like, what a tit think right. But there's, I had a lovely scene because I've obviously been watching others and never used, but we. But there's a lovely story about how that got you into music. You're more. You knew we could look nicht when she, when you said a Beatles song together. Uh, I was listening to it. I was not looking at green. I know it's that. <laughs> Do you know John, what I'm John about? Lennon yeah. tattoo and your Stevie Ray and all. Uh, nah, I'm Beatles daft. Aye. I'm a family we're kind of into music. Um, my two brother-in-laws are, are guitarists, and my sister's are like a wedding singer. She's done that since she was, was 16. Mum and dad were singers, but they didn't play anything. But they were just like singing harmony every night, and like it was class. Uh, um, but uh, no, I think. Um, like I think that was there's, that's one of them things like just when I watch them things that the members me have like because my mum saw that I felt really ashamed that but now it's like it's, I mean they've they done like a they done a competition so you could win that tracksuit and like, but they, even then the labels waiting on me. Oh, my phone's like the labels waiting on me, going, seeing me absolutely like steaming drunk, being up for probably a week, and like, and I've got these piano gloves and a gun, and I'm like, I'm shooting shit, and I'm in this <laughs> office, and I'm like, and they're like, they're like on you go, and I'm like, well, they're they're should have says, fucking no way. Aye, when you look back, you go. What, like, what chance did that have? Yeah, there, 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 was, there was the management, there was the, there was the label, there was like the, the boss of the, the, the label, you know what I mean? Like big cuts and they're just like, oh, they're just laughing at me. Can I remember like doing it for them laughing at us, like thinking it was, thinking it was funny. It's all, it's it's like, all funny until you're not making money for them anymore. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You know what I mean? Mm, they're exactly they're fucking saw. scumbags. Mm. <laughs> yeah, because that, that was a, 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 we were playing a festival as well and I end up staying up with that, uh, Tim Lovejoy and, and he's and he's he's uh that was the head the festival owner's daughter and we were like we were, we were on it one night and then the next night it was like I was maybe headlining this festival in Austria and I walked up I wasn't a, I just feeling a wee bit faint and I walked on the stage and I couldn't I couldn't sing at all I was like ah, and I was like trying to sing I was like the second tune I just got through the first tune and I was like ah, and I just went, well that's me why then fainted and I just came, came to but because because I hadn't slept or anything I was like. And then I came to and the guy was like, oh, you're never, you're never getting to play the festival again. And sure, I didn't, man. And I go, that ruined our uh, chances at other festivals as well. But, but mate, that's, I mean, that's tragic, but isn't it, man? That is, but, I, but the thing is, like, nobody was, uh, you could, I, I do blame it on myself because that was, that was my behaviour, you know what I mean? But it's, there was, it was weird because you, it was my I, game I, every, other, every other band were like, they were after like pure South London and other shit. Aye. You were for Dundee, it was like, when we drink, we drink like fucking two, you know what I mean? So it was like. I've only ever been to Dundee a couple of times, once for the football and twice for the wrestling, right? And one of the times we drew up at the wrestling, we got, remember we got off the bus and there was a guy standing eating a tub of margarine with a spoon. Aye, I <laughs> that happens that. in Dundee, that's like a thing. That's what people do. <laughs> I see them in the A tub of stork. No, 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 no. <laughs> Stevie, it's melted into my brain. It was Vitalite. <laughs> remember Vitalite? Wake up in the morning, one <laughs> <getting> some breakfast. <laughs> I, prefer, I prefer, I was asked to advertise Benico and when they asked me, I said, prove it. <laughs> Who was that? Remember? Don't know. Carol Vorderman? Was it? Uh, uh, Kyle, see when you're saying like... like... <laughs> I know you did it! I know you did it, you said, go to go to Kyle, see when you're saying like, in Austria and then you fainted on stage and that you couldn't sing, see stuff like that and you're saying that the, the, the fallout for that is you're not allowed to like, headline there and all that again. Did any of the band members ever pull you to the side and go, what the fuck are you playing at? Are we you on the same boat? No, I did, uh... Yeah, a few times. Um, but I mean, the band were pretty mad back then as well. Was, that's what I'm saying. Every band were kind of like that, and Aye. it just stopped. And then all of a sudden, you had to be. Uh, yeah, they'd really go and twitch. Yeah, I was like, but, I mean, <laughs> no, but I'm, it's it's a, it's it's Captain One, she's Captain Grado. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's the same. It's a generational thing. They say it about the Aye. football players. They say it about the wrestlers. They're more interested now in maybe computer games and. 
Yeah. They're very clean living. Cut a lot of the kind yeah. of. You mentioned. You mentioned I better. Know. I let you. I let you. I mean, I think we've got longevity in life now. I mean, Aye. but before that, it was like anything could happen. Aye. But does mean? it not help you when you're writing songs? When you're, you know, the Beatles must have sung, must have wrote "Yellow Submarine" under the influence. Uh, I know. I thought, I, I, thought I thought I did, mm-hmm. but then I wrote my best things bef- before I started getting crazy. And then <laughs> when it was crazy, I can't remember writing them and they didn't really make any sense. Aye, aye. Even though they make sense to people. People go, I totally understand me. You go, I've got it tattooed up there. And I went, I was talking shit there, man. <laughs> <laughs> There's no me in mind that whatsoever. Good segue. We've had a question from one of the listeners. Oh! Yeah, we've had a question from one of the listeners. His name is Scott Arfield. Yes. Big up to the show. Question from Mr. Faulkner. Best lyric you've ever wrote and what's your favourite tune from The View or Solo? P.S. I'll never fucking forgive you for not singing at my wedding. <laughs> Scott. What was I supposed to be singing his win? I don't know, mate. Mm. Um, I mean, that's what that 50 grand was for. I knew I had to do something for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, best lyric. Oh, fuck no, it's mine. Oh, he put us on the spot. How's that? What's your favourite lyric then? I, I, I you don't know, you've not got a favourite lyric? Nah. I quite like, I've had the same jeans off for four days now. <laughs> That was Kieran that wrote that one actually. Is it? Yeah. I like Sky Trendy because I can't understand a fucking word on it. Kieran wrote that as well. There we go. <laughs> I say, go on in <laughs> there. Do you know what? Do you know what song I love? I love Blondie. Nah, I wrote that one. I love Blondie. Yeah, yeah. I do. I love that song. Nah, what one is it? Call me or? <laughs> Fucking tall man, your own, your own man today. Sorry, he's in the Bondy songs, the band Bondy. <laughs> what the fucking balloon ones? The they name red balloons? Are they Bondies? That's not Bondy. No, it's <laughs> not. The band Bondy wrote Atomic and yeah, fucking yeah, call me. You know what? Yeah, it's Bondy saying ninety nine love balloons. No, oh, no, no, ninety nine red balloons. That wasn't it Bondy. No. Oh, who was it? It's, uh, oh, who cares? It's, it's, anyway, it's Kyle, I love the song Bondy and see. Yeah. Hats off to the Buskers class, but my right. favourite album's always Brendan Circuses, man. Always. Hats off to the Buskers for me. Ah, yeah, it's a classic. Yeah, it's a classic. One of my favourite gigs ever went, he was using the Barrowlands. I told you a story about it yeah. uh, when we met up before. It was, it just encapsulated that whole period of time, like that album and, what like I say, is Arctic Monkeys The Strokes, who you mentioned previously as well. That was a, a, just a great, it was a great time, wasn't it? it was, look, look at this prick, man. Look at this absolute target. <laughs> Don't you make my laugh. I tell you that. What do you want me to say? Do you want me to say that I don't like the guy's music? Because I do fucking like the guy's music, all right? Kyle, who was the biggest influences in growing up? Beatles, Oasis, Crowded House. Crowded House, what a band. Uh, I like the one that's more set. Shania Twain. Um, Mary J. Mary J. (laughs) (laughs) She's more of a bro now, though. Uh, Um, nah, nah, fuck. I like everything, man. Aye. Like I was, I was mad into rap when I was younger as well. So was I. Wanted to, wanted to rap before I, before I got into anything else. I won tickets to see Eminem. <laughs> did you? Did you go to see him <laughs> by, by doing Eminem? <laughs> or did you? On the stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, yeah, go, yeah. Go, go, go. The Langees one. Eh. Uh, repertoire. Give me the best things is wrestling. That one. Uh, it's that one. The real Slim Shady. Is that that one? Yeah, that one. Who did that one? Oh, I'll do no, I did. No, I did. Come I'll on. Do it. Nowadays, everybody want to talk. They've got something to say, but nothing comes out when they move the lips. Just a bunch of vibration. What the fuck is that? They've got a bad drink. Anybody else must end up that conversation. <laughs> Listen, they did colour coffee and Coke Bridge back uh, then. <laughs> Surely you were there at some point, Stephen. <laughs> Cheeky bastard. <laughs> oh, is that bar? Do, have, you ever, have you ever been in a physical altercation with somebody else that was in, that was in bands? Mm, yeah. Uh, the guy for the automatic and the guy for Mumra, but on the, on the enemy tour. Started, I started, mine Mumra, they used to sing a song called um, <coughs> Lights Out of the Darkness, the sweet posh guy. They were good, he was called New, he had the name called New, it was pretty weird. <laughs> uh, no, they were, they were oh, good. Oh, there's Mumra now. <laughs> Mumra, no, they were good, they were like this wee band that were kicking about. Um, no, but it started off joking and then got real. Um, <laughs> like headlocks and then like tour managers there. Uh, nah, I done them, I done them. <laughs> What's he done? Um, no wee posh guys serving you up on a plate. <laughs> but, uh, you were saying there about the, the automatic that must have been a bit of a hellish fight having to fight up monster. <laughs> Sorry. Oh Sorry. my god. <laughs> so this is your big day, man. <laughs> You're... Right, leave me alone. I'll just no sent for the rest of the show. <laughs> Thanks very much for listening to my portion of the show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, it was great to have you on, Kyle. And uh, I'll see you all next week. <laughs> That's funny, man. <laughs> you want to take your call, oh. on? 
So, Kyle, we're uh, a football podcast. Um, you, are you a Celtic fan? I'm no a Celtic fan as such. I don't really like f- football. Um, I like playing it. Um, my dad, my whole family is massive football fans. My, my dad was United, but also liked Celtic. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm a mates of Celtic fans. All right. Um, but uh, so I, I end up getting tired with that brush because we we done stuff with the Celtic view and that. But they they're like, oh, you need to you need to come do this interview because I want the lead singer to do it. So I was like, but I, what do you want me to say? And I, and I've not I'm, I'm clueless. <laughs> so I remember when we were playing this testimony thing, this charity match. It was like us and there was like General Butler, One Direction guys, and it was like a big thing. And I remember saying, I don't want to play him. I remember hiding, hiding in my room. The manager was like, come on, Pete's going to be disappointed. Pete's a guitarist for the view. And he was like, he's going to be disappointed if you didn't play. And I was like, I really don't want to play. It's made me nervous. There's like 60,000 people and playing football. And he was like, oh, you probably need to play. Just go. And right. I was like, oh, whatever. So <laughs> we've done it. And then Richard Ashcroft was playing. I think that's how we got, uh, cool. got, got asked. I was like, oh, he's going. I'll, I'll go. He was playing for Man U. And, uh, so I we went there, I got in the dressing room, and as soon as he came in, it was uh, Martin O'Neill. But it was like the brunt of his joke, so I was hanging, and I was like, and he was like, oh, we've got this little man here, he's fucking, he, I think what he needs is a drink of whiskey or something, come on. And I was, <laughs> and I was like, oh, fuck's sake. And I, it, like, just when everyone was laughing at us, it was making me normal. I was like, ugh, vomit. And, I was like, <laughs> and then anyway, but then I saw my strip, and I was next to Larson's, and I was like, yeah. So anyway, I was, there I went on, and Pete was like, up, running, running up and doing the pitch. It was Bobo Baldi kicking about, and... I can't remember what else. I think um, what's the big ginger? But Neil Lennon, Baldy guy. No, the the other the Welsh guy, John Harson. He was up Aye. front. He was kicking about someplace. And, <laughs> and anyway, but I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there um, with Martin O'Neill, and I've just got my stuff. And he's right, like, right. Get your boots on. And I'm like, all right. I was, he was like, Mon, you're going up. Are oh, you going up from Mars? And I was like, what the fuck. <gasps> and then uh, so I stood up, and I'm like, oh, fucking hard racing and that. And I was like, Kings, I'm a decent football player, but. I was like, what am I going to do here? I've never seen a picture of this in my life. <laughs> it was like, fucking hell. So I stood up and then the place roared. It was like, ah, I was like, fucking right, get right up for it. Right? <laughs> I just looked and it was like, Lubo was standing right next to it. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, ah, you're <laughs> so, was like, um, so anyway, so he went on and he went, not, he went, not yet, little man, get back on the bench. Went, just, just do a warm up, run up and down. <laughs> doing that. And then I ended, I ended up going, I still recorded, my sister's got it recorded, but went up front, Larson goes up. Keys the bar, I go up one, two, but right back to Larson, bang, right back in the net. Wow, yeah, I mean, that's that's class. I mean, to me, I'm not, I'm not really a football fan, but back then, like, I mean, Larson and that was a was a big deal to me. I used to remember they used to have them drawings. Uh, I used to pick up the drawings, the, the, uh, the, the pencil things. Yeah, right, uh, yeah. Had them on my one and that, so that was a big deal. It, um, must, it must be mental being the, the best Falconer that's ever played for Celtic. Yeah. No offense, Willie. Willie Falconer. Willie Falconer. Remember he uh, flung you into a uh, That's right, Magaluf, 1995. <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> happened? I was, in, I was in holiday at the Hotel Samos in Magaluf, and uh, I was only about eight, and all the Motherwell players were there for their, like, their holiday. And I became pals with Willie Falconer, who was a ball guy's at Brian. Brian Martin. Brian Martin. Uh, Brian Martin. Martin. And they all, threw me, they all threw me in the pool. Fuck it, it's We wait, so I touched him. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like attempted murder. <laughs> <laughs> Got to watch the Falconers. <laughs> but uh, mate, you assisted Larson for a goal, man. That's it was pretty good. I can't remember doing it, um, but people kept going, "Oh, the one-two Larson coming up this in the street." And I was like, "What the fuck's somebody going to this one-two? Right. So I was still half pissed with the night before, so I was like, "What's, this, what's a one-two?" <laughs> and then, I, and then I, I saw it, and I was like, "Oh shit!" And my sister was like, and "People still come up to me." Then he mentioned me. Well, you're that guy done that one thing, uh, Arson. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hey, "That's me, man." I'm getting the one too. Speaking of football, I've got something I need to tell you now. I've spoke to Stevie about this. Ben, Jamie, I know Jamie, you're not a football fan, right? We'll talk to you in NBA terms, right? But my mate texts me the other day. He says, "Chris, I'm going to the, uh, the hospitality at Ibrox with with Sunny." Um, we're going out after it as MD out and about. My mate's a Celtic supporter. Right, now, I don't know about any of you, right, but I just text him back saying, what? 
Mm. Mm-hmm. Right? He's like, oh, three booze. I says, I don't care. I'm raging at you. Right? Mm. Would you go to... Would, would you go no, to, no, no, no. See, that's the thing. I've, I've actually been to any of them before. Um, like, in, in Ibrox. Because I, I, obviously, I'm, I don't care. I'm quite... Uh, exactly. Right. But, but this guy's a Celtic season ticket yeah. holder. But I got I got stick off it. But, but I was like, I'm not a Celtic fan. Aye. It was like, my old security guard works. He, he, he's he's uh, mates with the Rangers boys. So it was, but I got to meet Alan McCoyston. That was a big... Aye. It was cool for me. Aye. Aye. When I was young, I liked them players. They played for Scotland. You know what I mean? So exactly. Cool. Absolutely, but uh, Kevin McDade, folk will know him as Dickov. Um, That's I'm, call, well I'm, I'm calling you out on the show. You're an absolute fucking disgrace. <laughs> okay? Get off that fence. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm not tall enough to get up on that <laughs> fence. <yeah. laughs> the closest one to that I remember was with the BBs. And uh, we had to, we went to the Ibrox tour, but it was only if we all went to the Celtic tour the following week. No. I know, right? Yeah. So we done the Ibrox tour, and then the following Sunday we had to go to Parkhead, and it was the day after. The five one game, Celtic beat us five one. Oh, I'd have found done sick. Aye, it was a bit. Of Sorry, BBs. Aye. I'm nowhere with it. But I'll be all right next week. We go to Ibrooks. <laughs> Brilliant. Nah, I can't do it. I can't do it. Aye, so what's your? Obviously, you grew up in Dundee, and that you said that your dad's got an affinity for United. Uh, when you were a kid, did you go to football growing up? Did your dad take you to football or anything? Like that? Nah, th- nah, he knew I wasn't really interested. Like my brother used to go. Um, um, but I was uh, just, I just never, I just still didn't get it. I, I, I bo- bores me watching football. I'm oh, so it? glad that we got you on this football <laughs> podcast. <Kyle. laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I mean, I, I can if the World Cup's on or something, it's cool. Yeah, but it's like, I've got like, I find it hard to keep my attention Aye. to something like that. Aye. Aye. It's like, so does Gredo. I'm a bit like that sometimes as well. Fan. He doesn't like football. See, sometimes, sometimes I, 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 no, I've got better. Yeah, I've got actually. better. No, you have. Since, better since you games. didn't know who Mbappe was, you have got better. That was dark. That was dark times. That was dark times. <laughs> that was really embarrassing. I think he was on tour you at that point, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs>《We are sponsored by Mr. Blonde. We give thanks to Mr. Blonde, the best barber in Glasgow. Who cuts your hair? What cuts my hair again? Oh, a uh, blast called Laura Ferguson. Oh, she's not paid for that advert. Um, <laughs> Mr. Blonde has. So if you fancy checking out all his haircuts, get yourself to Mr. Blonde UK on Instagram. You can see the various styles, the various cuts, the different dye jobs that you can get if you fancy a perm. Mr. Blonde will get it suited for you. So get yourself to Wilson Street for Mr. Blonde. And thanks very much for listening to the show. Every week we give thank you to PerformanceTires.net. Performance Tires, they supply a wide range of high quality tires at low, low prices. They've got shops in Annie's Land, Air and Kilmarnock. Now, to here's a crack. They provide you with a very professional tyre fitting service. All the branches have got up-to-date fitting equipment to take care of those precious alloy wheels. And they provide the highest standard of computerised wheel balancing and accurate wheel alignment. And here's the deal. If you have a car, a light trucker van, a Ford before, we supply all the all-season tyres, winter tyres, and the run tyres for all seasons. Some of the tyres that they have are Yokohama. Hankook. Pirelli. Firestone. And they specialise... In Lassa. So if you're needing your tyres fit out in your car, get to performancetires.net. You seen any good films recently, Kyle? Aye. You watched it getting good in the telly? Um, I've been watching Happy Valley. Oh, mate. I watched Class. the first episode of the new series last night. It's... It's brilliant, man. I told you to watch this, mate. I know. Is that, where, is that the one with Raquel for Coronation Street? Uh, it's, we said it, aren't you, mate? Curly's class. Curly's book. Remember, she bought a star. Curly bought a star for her. That's right. It's such a good programme, but no, it's I, so I, good. I watched the first... I watched the first episode that, like last weekend and Mrs was like we've seen this so I went right we'll, get, we'll go to the second series and so I watched the second series the third series and then it, <laughs> I was like clueless to what was going on because there's a big gap for the second series yeah, the but man. then she was like oh then I, I put on the second episode of the first series and so I was like I've not seen this she went oh it's me that's seen it so <laughs> I kind of ruined it for myself <laughs> it's brilliant but, man but, but, good. do you know what let's just say something because Kyle we had you doing for a wee project that we're in a wee kind of acting project mm-hmm. and we were sitting there we'd, we'd, done, a, we'd done a table read didn't we Aye. how good was he mate you were honestly <laughs> I'm not just blowing smoke up your ass. you were brilliant ah the day was read read the thing though it wasn't like we were acting or that I just mate, read the thing. But no but that's why it was funny because it was nae, it was you, you were just being yourself and you were only trying it you were so just, natural it was just dead blase but it was funny as fuck so I'll use this for my portfolio are you hearing this because <laughs> we need to we'll try to get you hooked up because I reckon Ben was there as well Ben was there Ben was there as well Aye. But Aye. no, we'll see what happens with that. Aye. There will be something we'll come for. Is, is that something you want to sort of get into? I know you're doing the music. Is there anything else that you want today? Because you've done a lot. 
Um, I, I'm always chopping down doors. I'm always looking for something to do. Um, I've always wanted to do. What's your passions? It's iron, man. Uh, I like musicals. Um, you, you've, you've written a musical like as well, haven't uh, you? I have, uh, it's, um, it's going to be on the, the fringe um, in the summer. Brilliant. Um, me and my missus wrote it, and we're going to be doing that. As we're, we're just start rehearsals in a couple of weeks. Both of in it? Nah, but it's kind of based on our lives. Aye. Like you told, you um, told us that it's like a personal yeah. story. Yeah, but it's it, we've used different names because it's... It was weird because we've all... We, we, like, I, we kind of came up with the story and Rodgers well, wrote the script, but then when we were talking about it, it was, it was always like, oh, it's going to be fine, it's fine, Ken. When we done like a table read with the actors and that, it was like, oh shit, like, fair, like Aye. tears and all this shit. And, and we, done, we recorded it because it was at the rep last year and we recorded a bit. And uh, every time I've like late on at night, I was when I was I was over in Spain like last week, and I had to, and my mates was writing me. He was like, "Oh, I was like, you want to see it? We we'll put it on." And we were just like, "Oh, I was like, why did you get me to play this?" Oh, because <laughs> it's about your life, but it's, uh-huh. but it's also it's there's that added arms and legs, but it's a bit close to home, so I'm not sure if it's good for me just keeping on watching it. So I'm I'm going to try and stay at rehearsals, stay out uh, with them because it was it's pretty pretty heavy, like because it's about um it's about shit that's happened and. But uh, it's a bit postnatal depression. Aye. Um, but uh, but hearing my missus side of that story, telling it while I was away gallivanting in, mm. in America and all that shit, it's pretty hard to hear. Because you love that woman, don't you? Yeah, she's class. That's why you married her. No, no but you, you, he's, he's, I've, I've saw interviews before, and, and obviously when I was at the Scottish Music Awards, you can tell, <laughs> you just have got a, a great romance. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty romantic between us. Aye. Hey, what? Keenan's a ready man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went the whole time without a red face. <laughs> it, so- it sounds like the sort of relationship where you don't eat tubs of margarine, so <laughs> nah. that's a that's a bonus right there. <laughs> no, nah, but I, nah, th- I was going that way though, being for Dundee, and that's the thing that we're all doing Dundee, like eat tubs of margarine. <laughs> right, light, mind you. Right, right. So you got to get your vitamin somehow. Right, so <laughs> wh- uh, when is this it's coming out at the at the fringe? Mm. Yeah, uh, August, it's July, August, or whenever the fringe is. Um, but yeah, there's loads of shit going on. I mean, the, uh, people are always at me, do you, ever, do you ever give yourself a break? I'm always at, even like, so, I'm like, for, get as an Asian, get me, aye, ass, aye, like, aye, dude, aye. get me on this. I'm just constantly, that's what, I, that's what I've been like since I was a kid. Anyway, when I was like, I, I used to like find what, when the internet came out, I was like, right, I'm going to find out what record record labels do, what who's who signed Keen, who signed you to, who signed all this. And I, I just phoned them and said, right, it's this guy again, just annoy them. Four had the man. That I would send them CDs, send them tapes. I've always been that's, like, that's what, that's what I, 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 I think we all kind of do that. Right. You're always trying to like, just push down doors, man. Did, yeah. did, did you hear well? the story of how Grado started doing the panel? No. I, I just one, one time I, I phoned up and it was at the march Aye. and I was like, I says, I went the panel. He's like, Who are you? I said, Grado. And he says, Well, mm. he says, Well, we've, we've had a guy here that's done the panel mine for years and years and he had a wee catchphrase called, It was, I'm enjoying myself. And I went, well, I've got, it's yourself. And he went, it'll never work. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I, he took me on. And I Fast. remember, after he'd done that, <clears throat> the boss man phoned me, and me and him had just done a wee bit and never sat together. And when he phoned me and told me, he says, this guy's just for me, Grado, you know him, didn't you? And I was pissing myself laughing, because the image of him waking up, my mum going, Oh, I'm going to do panel, man. Because <laughs> <laughs> he'd been to see Treasure Island, didn't it? I know. And you got a wee buzz for it. I bet, you, I bet you're the same. Like, I went to see it and, they were there, and I think the song of the year was Because I'm happy, clap along, and if you feel... Right, now we're all on the stage. It was my dancing, dance. wasn't it? I, I, I was going, that oh, works, girls. <laughs> I was sitting in the crowd and I'm going, I could do that, I want to get it. You know what I mean? I could Never thought about that? Nah, nah, no, no, yeah, but I'm sure, I'm sure one day, I'm sure one day I'll get into the panel. Uh, <laughs> we enjoy like, it. I'm not here, I've, I, anything, anything, anything to go with, like, I'm just like, even like the different styles of music and that, I've, been, I've tried like, been trying a bit of K-pop and that recently. Really? And like, that's madness, just anything, anything, like. What about TikTok, you own that? Nah, nah, I've, 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 my mate was trying to get his own. I think you'd be quite a big hit on TikTok. Ah, you know, I think I've got a TikTok, but I was, I was keeping consistency, I can't be bothered. How many days sit down with an acoustic guitar once a night and belt out a tune? I can't, can't but it. honestly, I've not got a second to, even writing tunes is, is hard for me, like, I can't get a minute. Every time I've sent a voice note, they're like, I was there, kind of barely screaming all the time, ah, so. But listen to me, right, in all honesty, you're saying there that you don't want to play in front of wee, we uh, crowds and stuff like that anymore. <laughs> See if you put your stuff out in TikTok, mate, it explodes. It's, it's a different world, isn't it? Really, it, it really know, is. And then you go like, oh, I might do a tour, and the next thing you know, you're putting on extra nights and extra nights yeah. because of the it's 
Så jeg kan ikke sove ud. Jeg har kommet med i sådan der har done TikTok and like went massive for it, but it's just it's finding the time of day that it's like it's different generation, man. I've just I, 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 honestly, I just I can't be bothered with it. It's like I'm always just hoping it comes to me. Yeah, you know I mean, but mm. I can't. It doesn't. That's how I'm trapping doing other, trapping doing other doors, but like. Honestly, the TikTok, it was going well, and I've got my mate that does it, and he's still like, oh, you're being a bit flaky on it. And I'm like, what do you want? I can't be arsed. Like, Aye. what do you want me to do? Like, <laughs> I can't be arsed. That's true. My, you daughter, my 10 year old daughter's on who's doing TikToks as soon as she's for school and all that, and I'm like, you know what we're like, but see if like Greg Core that uh, messages and says, oh, you need to do a wee video for somebody that's won the, won the mug, you're like, oh. it's always. <laughs> It's always like, who's going to reply to this? Yeah. Who's doing it? Who's doing it? Aye, aye. And so imagine having to do that every night for a TikTok. I suppose you're right in what you're saying there, Kyle, but... It's just I went on, I went on last night and I'm going, I'm looking at somebody's phone and I'm going, God, it falls out. I'm going, that, this is like the new... Aye. And then see even, I do a hang on the radio every morning where I find out whose birthday it is, right? Mm-hmm. And see the first results. It's, it's about 10, 10, 11, 12 TikTokers Aye. that they put first before Influences Barry Manilow. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. the TikTokers first thing. I know. With popularity. Have seen any of the TikTokers on the Copacabana? <laughs> <laughs> Assholes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but Kyle, it's been great having you, man. It has been great, man. Uh, no, you're a busy man. No, you're a busy man. We appreciate you coming on. Mm-hmm. When's your gig in the town? Um. <sighs> 15th of April, I think. 15th of April. 15th of April. Yeah, it's for, I think it's for independent venues or some something. But it's a solo gig, so I thought that kind of stuff was over. But hey ho, it's back again. But I know you'll be singing Tina Turner. No, probably. Oh, well, the only thing is hard. The only thing that's hard to be that tune is when I date. It's like it's, I play. I've done it off rhythm, so it's, mm. I need a guitarist yeah. to be saying it while I date. It. So if it's me, I'm, I, I'm playing full band, but we've never rehearsed it. So if I've got my guitarist there, just me and him, it's easy. But it's like, dum, de 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 de. so it's hard to play that off time and sing and, at the same time. And the bit that goes, de 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 de. Because that's yeah. an extra instrument, isn't it? Yeah, that is. <gasps> oh. Have you ever needed a tuba player for your band? Do you know he won the best tuba player in the Ayrshire Award? Aye, 1998. I was the only man that entered it. I can so, imagine you playing the tuba, that's class. <laughs> have you ever been involved in an accident and it's not your fault? Mm, no. Well, see if you are. Mm-hmm. It's just 100% of your claims. G4 <laughs> claims. If you've had an accident, some idiots ran into the back of you around about, get in touch with G4 claims with Nicole and the girls will help you out. Stephen, tell them a wee bit more about it. Well, they will replace your vehicle with a like for like replacement. They'll take all the hassle, all the stress away for you. They will deal with it. And they're just, they're lovely people, aren't they? And if you want to get a hold of them, it's 01698 767 172. 172. That's 01698 767 172. G4 claims. Not at fault claims. claims. Made easy. easy. So thanks, Kyle. Thanks very much for coming on the show. Cheers, man. <laughs> Pleasure. Did you, did you like it? Class. Class, man. Very, um, that's a good way to wake up in the, the midday. Class. <laughs> <laughs> When you wake up at the crack of noon. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck in all your future endeavours. Cheers, Kyle. Cheers, Kyle. Round of applause for Kyle Fonga. Whoa. Whoa.